the unity of a man and of a woman that brings them together in holy matrimony uh, is a relationship that has been established by God. It is a relationship that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, to the Garden of Eden, to Adam, and to Eve. And over the years, different cultures have developed a wide variety of ceremonies and of traditions to mark the beginning of that particular relationship between that man and that woman. And one such tradition that has developed over the years in some cultures is uh, the practice of the bride and of the groom having their hands and their wrists bound together with a cloth uh, or with a cord during the marriage ceremony as a picture of the unity and of the, the permanence of their commitment to each other in that marriage. And it is from that tradition that we get the term tying the knot, a term that we still use today to describe the marriage ceremony. But it is also true that over the years there has been a great deal of confusion concerning what a marriage relationship really is to be like, how we are to function in that relationship. And it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that the Apostle Paul addresses the confusion concerning marriage that had developed among the followers of Jesus Christ in the church in the city of of Corinth. Confusion that in many places uh, and in many ways still exists today. And perhaps it is somewhat understandable that there was confusion in the church in Corinth. Uh, some of them in that fellowship were still slaves. And with only with the consent of their master could they live in a tent with a woman until the owner sold one of them. Uh, some of them were freeborn. And after a year of living together uh, with a woman, the government recognized that relationship as what we would call a common law marriage. Other women in the church had been sold by their father to a man in order for her to be his wife. And then there were others who did have a formal marriage ceremony, complete with a ring, with flowers, and even with a wedding cake. And there were some in the church who had been through a number of marriages and a number of divorces. There was a wide variety of people in that church in a wide variety of marital relationships. And this situation was confusing to the believers in Corinth. What should they do now that they were followers of Jesus Christ? Some of them even thought that it would be better not, not to be married at all, that it would be more spiritual to be single. The same type of thinking, same type of confusion among some people today. So apparently the leaders in the church in Corinth wrote a letter to Paul. And why to Paul? Because he was their spiritual father. He had led many of them to Christ and he had ministered to them there in Corinth for some time. And so Paul responds to their letter, and beginning in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he says this. Now, concerning the things about which you wrote, there, there has been much debate among you surrounding uh, the issue of marriage. 
So first of all, let me be clear on this point. It is good not to touch a woman. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Some people have been confused by that statement. What was he saying here? Well, he was saying this. Despite what some people may think, it is honorable and it is acceptable before God to remain single. But let me warn you of this, he adds. Not having a physical relationship with a woman in marriage can bring a unique set of difficulties into your life. There is the possibility that you can open the door to, to lustful thoughts, to lustful feelings. You can open the door to lustful behavior. And though there are many compelling reasons to get married, for example, for love, uh, for a partner to share your life with, for a friend, uh, for children, for a family. Marriage is also a picture of the relationship between Christ and his church. And you may also choose to get married because you believe that the Lord has brought you together to honor him and, and to serve him. And certainly all of these things are, are valid and, and biblical reasons to get married. Still, Paul points out, in verse 2. There is another reason to consider for being married. Being single can leave us open to the danger of immoralities, porneia in Greek, the danger of falling into the sin of fornication because of our unfulfilled physical desires. So the reality is this, for many, for many people, it would be better to marry than to be inflamed with those passions that, that could overwhelm us and that, that could uh, cause us to sin. Better to tie the knot than to become bound up in sin. So, he says, let each man who is among you in the fellowship, have his own wife, who is to be a believer. And let each woman who is among you have her own husband as well. Here's the pattern. One man with one woman in a marital relationship as one family in Christ. For it says in Genesis 2, 18, that it is not good for a man to be alone. Marriage is the pattern. Marriage is normal. Marriage is biblical. And the truth is this. Marriage is the foundation for the continuation of our civilization. For without the family, eventually civilization as we know it would be destroyed. Well, now, this marriage relationship uh, is also a physical relationship, Paul points out, that has been ordained by God, where we're told in Genesis 2, 24, that a man and a woman are to become one flesh. So Paul says in verse 3, let the husband fulfill his duty to his wife. Ophele in Greek. Let him freely give back what is due to her. And likewise, he says in the same way, let the wife freely give back what is due to her husband. Don't use your body as a weapon. Don't use it as a means uh, to manipulate each other, but use it as a way to glorify Christ. The Lord elevates marriage. It is our sacred responsibility to express 
to physically express our love for each other in our marriage. Romans 12, verse 1, we're told that our bodies, uh, actually every aspect, isn't it, uh, of who we are belongs to the Lord. So we're told there to yield ourselves to him. We're to continually surrender ourselves to him with a heart that longs to please him in undefiled devotion to him so that we might glorify him and serve him. That is our responsibility before the Lord. But it is also our responsibility in our relationship with our wife or, or with our husband to offer our bodies to each other. So Paul makes it clear in verse 4. The wife alone does not have authority. Exu siadso in Greek. She does not have exclusive power over her own body, but it says her husband also does. And likewise, in the same way, he says, the husband alone doesn't have authority, exclusive power, over his own body, but the wife also does. This physical relationship in marriage is to be a mutual expression of the bond between them, a bond between a husband and a wife. They are intertwined together in their relationship with each other. So here is the command in verse 5, where Paul emphatically states this to the church. Stop depriving one another. Apostereo in Greek. Stop defrauding one another. Stop cheating one another. Stop deserting one another. Stop withholding yourself from a physical relationship with each other, whether your wife or your husband is a believer or is an unbeliever. Honor the Lord by honoring the one to whom you are married. Honor him with intimacy to each other. Except, he says in verse 5, by agreement for a time. Sumphonos in Greek. It means to agree. It means to sound out in unity with one voice. From where we get our English word symphony. So, he says... In unison, in harmony, agree by a mutual decision for a good reason to refrain from physical intimacy for a time. Well, now in uh, Exodus 19, you will recall that when the Lord was about to give his people the Mosaic Law, he told them to set themselves apart from their wives uh, for how long? He said for three days. Years later, in Joel chapter 2, when the Lord saw the wickedness of his people, what did he tell them to do? He said that they were to return to him with weeping and with fasting and with mourning and with a heart of repentance. And so he said, let the bridegroom come out of his room. Let the bride come out of her chamber. There were times, and there are times, as husband and wife, we must put our physical relationship on hold for a greater purpose. As Paul tells us here in verse 5, where he says, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. But, he quickly adds this, then come back together again, like-minded in your desire to please one another with your hearts in harmony, in unity, as a symphony, 
so that Satan does not have a weapon available to him to use to tempt you to sin in your mind or in your body because of your lack of self-control. Akrasia in Greek. Because of your self-indulgence. Because of your lack of willpower. But Paul clarifies this. He clarifies all of this for us in verse 6, where he says, This I say to you. All these things I have just said to you concerning being single and concerning being married by way of concession. Not a good word there. It's uh, in Greek, sun nome in Greek. It really means awareness. He's saying this. I say this because I am aware of your needs. And I say this not by way of command, epitage, not because it's a mandate for everyone to follow. Everyone is different. Look, he says, if you're single, it's good. If you're married, well, it's also good. And at one time, Paul probably was married. And perhaps uh, his wife had died, or perhaps she had left him uh, when he came to know Jesus Christ. We don't know for sure. But when he wrote these words to the church in the city of Corinth, he was single. And so he says to them in verse 7, In one way, I wish that all men were even as I myself am. I'm single. And yet I am content to be single, and I am not tempted to sin. I am not consumed by lust. But this is not a command. He said this is a gift from God, given by his grace according to our need. So, he continues, in this way, each man, each woman among you, has been given his own gift from God. Some in this manner, others in that manner. Being single and being devoted to the Lord is a gift. Tying the knot and being devoted to him is also a gift. Though each has its own set of challenges, still, these are gifts from God. Singleness and being married, these are gifts for our good in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Borean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.